Join along as we travel up the northern end of Vancouver Island to camp, relax, enjoy nature, and discover a little history of the places we visit along the way. In these videos, we camped in Sayward and rode out to Kelsey Bay to look out at York Island and its battlements. From there, we enjoyed the steam engine locomotive in Was, and then carried on to Telegraph Cove, Alder Bay, Port McNeil, Port Alice, Port Hardy, and Fort Rupert each place offering a glimpse into our past. I'll touch on a brief history with stills as we travel with so much more for you to discover on your next visit. Again, thank you for joining. Please hit that subscribe button and here we go. Well, I can definitely say this is a lot smoother crossing for the bikes than when we were going across Canada and Port of Basque. It happily can just sit on its center stand. Even Jonathan is looking just fine and nothing is moving. Pretty easy. Looks like we're going to set our hammocks up here. We just pulled into the cutest place. It's called White River RV Resort. And obviously the river is right over here behind us. So that's kind of cool. Anyway, we're going to get set up. They're super nice, super accommodating. And we're in Sayward. I think it's 1673 Sayward Road. So here we go. And here goes the process to get everything unpacked and get set up. So last night we actually stopped in Elk Falls and uh, it was way too busy there. And we phoned this man and he was so accommodating. These trees are absolutely spectacular and beautiful. And he was like, well, I'm not sure if I have any uh, trees that you can hang hammocks from, but I got a tree area out front and I'm quite happy to put you there. And that's exactly what he did. And he was absolutely wonderful. Good morning, Johnny. How'd you good sleep last morning, night? Good morning, Lisa. <laughs> I slept okay. It was pretty good, actually. Good. Got chilly, but it was nice. I haven't had enough coffee yet. Again, thank you, John Westerlaken, for the excellent coffee cups. And jo Jonathan carries the coffee bottom. Yeah, coffee. Yeah, very good. Unfortunately, we bring this stuff along because it's practical and it takes a little less room in my Pelican cooler which again got hung up in the trees last night. Beautiful area. This morning it was really nice. We actually woke up to eagles which was so cool and then they have this one carved into the tree. Pretty beautiful. And they have river access along here and we'll take a shot of the river. There we go. I love the rivers, especially camping along them. So peaceful and so much wildlife. The Salmon River Valley has a shared history, yet the Port of Kelsey Bay and Sayward each has a unique past. Sayward was established in the 1890s and was called Port Cusum. Access was from the water and settlers pushed inland, spreading into the valley. By 1917, the native village was empty and today descendants live in nearby communities. Railroad logging started in 1904. It was not till after World War II that the gravel road connected Sayward and Campbell River and it was paved in 1979, connecting the North Island. Kelsey Bay was previously the southern terminal for the inside passage ferries until 1978. 
Charles William Kelsey moved to the wharf on their Scow House floating home in January 1925, operating a store, a telegraph office and founded a post office. Today from the wharf you can see York Island. In 1937 it was determined a suitable site by the War Department for coastal defence and 60 buildings were built to support the garrison. The original 4.7 inch guns were replaced with 6 inch MK7 guns on the MK2 mounting transferred from Stanley Park Battery. Anti-aircraft defense was provided by two 40mm guns and 800 million carbon arc searchlights were positioned to maintain night firing ability. York Island was first supplied drinking water by Union steamships until a 50,000 gallon cement water tank was installed. The fort was abandoned in 1946. Today several buildings remain, many reclaimed by nature. This is Kelsey Bay, just in Sayward, and lots of people fishing on the wharf and enjoying a gorgeous day. The Nimkish Valley Railroad was adapted for challenging physical conditions of northern Vancouver Island's forests. Eventually, the logging road extended over 215 kilometers through dense forests and steep river valleys. This is Steam Engine 113 from the American Locomotive Company in 1920, and the railroad's began here in 1917. Was is a small village in the Nimkish Valley, historically acting as a trade route for the indigenous peoples, connecting the east and west coast of the North Island for hundreds of years. The logging camp was the center for the Englewood Logging Railway and was the last operating logging railroad in North America. And on November 7, 2017, following a deadly derailment, operations ceased after 100 years. The Nimkish Valley Heritage Park is home to the Steam Locomotive 113, built in 1920 for rail logging. Its sister Steam Locomotive No. 112, an oil-fired tank model, was retired in 1968 and sat for 45 years in Beaver Cove, up the inlet from Telegraph Cove, and now has been moved by truck to Port Alberni. had no idea we'd come across this locomotive in Wasp, of all things. 
absolutely spectacular. I love trains. Built in 1920, 113 is known as a 282 steam locomotive, a wheel configuration commonly used in the 20th century. just over here and I'm gonna be able to wake up to a beautiful view of Alert Bay where grandma and grandpa worked many 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 decades ago and it's just out that way so it's gonna be a really great night I think I'm thinking tonight's hammock setup is pretty darn spectacular this is the view the sun's setting at Alder Bay between Telegraph Cove and Port McNeil. And there's a look out to Alert Bay. It's absolutely beautiful to look out tonight. And we've got the camp, hammocks all set up, up top here. And good morning. Looks like it's an absolutely fantastic view out from my hammock. John and brought me coffee this morning and it was a lovely way to wake up with the eagles around us. From a one-man telegraph station, a fish saltery, and a sawmill village, the small village of Telegraph Cove has a big history. It shares the inlet with Beaver Cove three kilometers away. Logging began in Beaver Cove around 1908, and the first logging railways ran through the upper Nimkish to the top of Nimkish Lake, and another from the bottom of the lake to Beaver Cove. In 1925, a new sawmill was opened in the northern part of the cove, and a new town sprang up named Englewood. 
the steam engines pulled the log cars and the rail line became known as Englewood Railway. Englewood became a steamer port with a post office and a school, a community hall and a Japanese village. In 1942, the machinery was removed from the mill for scrap metal to aid in the war effort. We stayed in Alder Bay to camp where we could look out at Alert Bay. We woke up to hear the orcas blowing near the bluffs that we were camped on. With the eagles flying and calling overhead, it was a lovely evening sunset thinking about my grandparents who met, lived and worked at St. George's, built in 1908. They were engaged on the Nimkish River. Grandma is photoed here on the balcony of the hospital between 1937 and 1939 and Grandpa Tickell on the porch. Alert Bay is the oldest community on northern Vancouver Island and was once a key trading post for First Nations people and the merchant mariners. Known as the home of the Orca, you will find the visitor center and museum with photos and artifacts from the region's pioneers. Remnants of the old fishery and historic buildings still stand, and it is the center of arts and culture of the First Nations people. All pioneers of their time, our family has deep roots to the west coast and B.C. Grandma Elsa arrived from Sweden to Merle Island. The Larsons, Van Tynes, were fishermen, loggers, and craftsmen, and all with a love for the outdoors. I hope you have enjoyed this adventure, and in the next video we will visit a few more places to discover on northern Vancouver Island. Please like, subscribe, and comment, and I will reply. And don't forget, just get out and ride.